giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. So now let's move on to some excellent quality matches with the Detroit Championship and the finals of that. Nick Jr., take us away. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so today I'm going to go ahead and uh, break down probably one of the most exciting matches as well as uh, my favorite match of this year, Finals 3 uh, from the Detroit Championship. Um, although we had some new faces of the finals this year at Detroit, uh, we have uh, one team returning from last year's finals, and that team being Team 217, the Thunder Chickens. Uh, this team not only surprised me, but I'm pretty sure literally the whole state of Michigan from their first district. Uh, and also the state of New York. They were at Finger Lakes. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yep. Uh, from their first district and Finger Lakes uh, to the Detroit championship team. Um, but enough about me talking about my home state champions. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the analysis of this match. Uh, so first, I'm going to go ahead and break down each alliance's strategy and what it allowed them to do. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with our blue alliance. A um, few things to note with starting positions before we go ahead and play this match. So 217 is starting on level one, um, along with Team 3707. So right off the bat, blue is going to be down in Sandstorm pin, uh, in Sandstorm bonus points based on uh, that being said. So if we're going to go ahead and start that match. Um, 217 is obviously doing this for alignment purposes. Uh, clearly that they want to be able to get uh, the hatch. Um, I think that uh, they are able to get it easier. Um, 3707 Techno Dogs caps the front two hatches on the cargo ship in Sandstorm, taking away two bays. Um, and we're going to go ahead and pause it really quick right here. Um, and while meanwhile, the Techno Dogs and the Chickens are completing those, uh, 4481 Team Remembrance goes ahead and caps a cargo bay on the side. Rembrandt, I'm sorry. Uh, goes ahead and caps a cargo bay on the side of the cargo ship with a hatch. So directly after Autonomous, we're going to see 4481 Remembrance. Uh, goes oh. direct. Did I say Rem Rembrandt. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, goes directly to the red side to start playing defense on 930. Uh, what we're going to see now is Techno Dogs go ahead and finish the whole other side of the cargo ship while 217 absorbs the defense from 1310. Uh, this then allows 3707 to fill the left side of the cargo ship. So we're going to go ahead and play this. Uh, so, yeah. So, like I said, 3707 goes to cargo right away. They're going to cap those two spots right there on the blue side. And then from there, uh, Chickens had the second hatch uh, from their Autonomous now capping the second part. So 1310 is going to come over there. And now their 1310s uh, or 217 is going to go ahead and absorb that 1310. Uh, we're going to pause at 115 right here. Um, but this is where the key of the Blue Alliance's strategy is going to come into play here. Um, while 217 keeps the red defensive robot occupied, 3707 is going to go ahead and take advantage of the open field and fills up the rest of the left side cargo bay, like I stated. Uh, and then they're going to flip rockets, uh, which is actually uh, could be confusing the driver of 1310. Um, okay. Uh, so Techno Dogs then go ahead and finish hatching up that rocket and kill the cargo in that rocket, as well as filling up the other three bays of the cargo ship. So we can go ahead and play that here. Um, so by the Thunder Chickens absorbing this defense with their six Neo drivetrain, uh, this is going to allow Team 3707 to completely go hog wild with the cargo and destroy any opportunity to place cargo left to them. So right there, Chickens are going to flip, and then uh, they go ahead and grab the hatch. So now 1310 is noticing that they're going to stay on Chickens, uh, but while Techno Dogs are going to go ahead and cap that, now allowing um, that would be one, two, that would be five now cargo that they can place on that side of the field. So. Um, like I said, by doing this, this is now allowing 3707 to have that complete uh, top right side of the field open to them and allowing uh, to basically capitalize those cargo uh, positions. So um, two, while 217 is still fighting with 1310 to possibly get some more hatches back there. So I think uh, they do flip again. So 217 is going to grab some hatches there, allow 3707 to flip and come back over to play some more cargo. And it's going to be sort of a revolution. Uh, with 217 having that drivetrain, I think it might be a little bit easier uh, for them to maneuver around uh, 1310 since 3707 is on the dirty swerve. Um, but so then like right there, uh, 3707 has all but one of those cargo ship bays, so they're going to flip right here. Um, so now what they're going to happen is 217 is going to actually play some counter defense here while 3707 is going to go ahead and cap the rest of those cargo ship spots. Uh, we're going to pause it 28 seconds here when it comes up uh, to kind of go ahead and go in there. But 
So, yeah, it's there 3707. Go ahead and finish those cargo, though. Um, on the way back, uh, 1310 just momentarily is going to get a quick hit from 217. And then as they go, as 217 backs off to go climb, 4481, I'm not even going to say their name because I'm going to mess it up. Uh, they're going to come up and actually give a nice chip to 1310 while preventing them uh, from that climb. So, if you want to go ahead and play it here. Um, what's interesting is that while we're <clears throat> focusing on the, the chipping of uh, 4481 um, and 1310 here, Excuse me. 217 actually falls off of their climb. Uh, so now 3707 is quick to respond with pushing them out of the way. And um, believe it or not, without this climb, 3707 to 217 and 4481 does not win this championship. So uh, hats off to 3707 by being able to quick respond and 4481 to playing that quick defense. Uh, just that little chip is, uh, you know, could have saved that extra time for them to pull back on the blue hab. Does anyone have anything to add on the Blue Alliance's strategy of this match? No, I just remember that. I just remember watching it. I saw two seventeen fall, and I was like, "That's it." Yeah, game, I completely... game over. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah just uh, going off of what I said like five minutes ago with the switching sides and whatever. This is the match that I was thinking about at Detroit Championships, where they're both switching sides, and it's flawless. But you know, thirty-seven oh seven with their dirty swerve kind of has a distinct advantage to switching sides and getting around defense just because of the way that they move and how they're built for that. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So uh, we're going to go ahead and rewind this match. And now I'm going to go ahead and go over our red alliances strategy. So uh, while Tyler's getting that loaded up here um, off the gate, uh, before we start the match, 13, 10 and 54, Oh six, uh, Celtics and Rumadine. I think that's how you pronounce it. I probably Ronnie Mead. Ronnie Mead, man. I'm not Rumadine. I'm sorry. Took my chances. I'm from Michigan. Give me a break. Um, You're like so, 10 minutes from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so both start on level two, causing red to be up to 15 to 13, uh, going into the teleoperated period before any game pieces are accounted. Uh, if you want to go ahead and play the match. Uh, here we're going to see 5406 and uh, 930 both place a hatch on the rocket. Um, and then uh, after they place that hatch, they're going to go ahead and pull back um, to... Uh, grab another hatch, so right after Sandstorm, they're prepped and ready for that second hatch. Uh, meanwhile, 1310 is going to go ahead and cap the front hatch on the cargo ship. So, uh, in my opinion, this is where the key part of the Red Alliance strategy makes a super match close, or makes the match super close. Uh, if you want to go ahead and stop here, uh, notice in this shot how both both 5406 and 930 go to grab that, uh, are both playing cargo before continuing on the rocket. Uh, this is super smart on Red's uh, part to prioritize cargo points uh, before creating more scoring opportunities. Uh, keep in mind, at this moment, Red has no cargo in the cargo ship, uh, if you want to go ahead and play it. So, like I said, they're going to focus cargo here. So, while 930 is absorbing that defense, it's allowing cell techs to come completely be uh, have an open field here so they're going to play those bottom two ball uh, bottom two cargo in that uh rocket with the cap and then they're going to go straight to the cargo ship so before them even prioritizing to get hatches on the rocket they're going to go ahead and fill those cargo up so by doing this this is allowing them to be able to be more versatile around defense uh, if they were just to take those hatches up there they would have to uh, obviously placing a hatch is more a more difficult than placing a cargo in my opinion uh, so by doing that, it's allowing them to have more scoring opportunities. Um, continue to play cargo. 5406 finishes their side of the cargo ship, resulting back to hatches to create more opportunities for cargo. Uh, we are still seeing 930 absorbing that defense to keep 5406 free-flowing. Um, as they keep doing this, uh, 4481 basically stays on 930 this whole match, uh, actually holding to 930 to only complete uh, the, the second level of the rocket, while 930 tries to fight uh, to get those few last balls in the cargo ship. Uh, in the meantime, Celtex has now got uh, the level two capped on the rocket and is now placing cargo in level two of that uh, back left rocket. So um, from here, if you want to go ahead and skip to time zero, um, where it shows the Red Alliance on the HAB, um, we can kind of go ahead and talk about this interesting climb that uh, may or may not have resulted um, in the change of this championship. So um, this is an interesting part of this match. So I, th it was called one way in uh, the round robin. It was called one way in the finals. Um, what you see here is 13-10. 
Um, goes up to they go to climb and they turn on the hab and lift their stilts up, um, allowing 930 with their four bar climber to kind of pop under 1310. And then 1310 is going to come down and almost act like a support bar for 930 to keep that foot off the ground. Um, so with that little chip that for you or with that little chip that 217 and 4481 provide, um, it's allowing them to uh, not have all that alignment time that they're used to. And uh, this match, in fact, uh, was scored with two Red Alliance climbs and one level one, uh, only for the fact of being, although 1310 is on top of Habitat 3, part of their robot is supported by 930's robot, and 930's robot transistly is touching level one with that foot. So, unfortunately for the Red Alliance, uh, they're, they're going to lose this match 91 to 90, um, allowing the Blue Alliance to take the world championship. Um, I, after, uh, today I did get a chance to speak with, uh, Rishi from 1310, their drive coach and strategy mentor today. And I asked him two questions. And the first one was, was there ever a worry that you guys wouldn't be able to complete the double have three, uh, if you were to have not as much time. And he answered with chickens and 4481 forced us to do that late climb in finals three. And I was forced to make the call instead of driving on the hab to get closer to the wall to immediately turn and engage our stilts and 930 would have hopefully pushed us far enough. Uh, that was a big reason for the level two hang moment. Credit the chickens for that. And the last question I asked was, from this experience, what are you going to take from it? Rishi's answer was, chickens are a world-class team, and that was a world-class alliance. I commend them from how creative they were, both offensively and defensively. I wouldn't really change much about our strategy. Wish I had saw chickens fall and possibly could change my call, but I'm happy with how our alliance performed. Hats off to the Blue Alliance, captained by Team 3707. Hey, I just want to jump in on, on something that kind of struck home with me there in regards to not seeing another team fall off a climb. This actually same thing happened to my team back in 2012 at the Archimedes finals, which a lot of people oh, here we go uh, know about, right? <laughs> yeah, no, but, but this, this is the same thing that happened to us is that uh, during that match, 11-14 uh, died uh, and we, uh, our drive team didn't see that. And then we could have easily won a division because of something like that, but we didn't see it. And it's extremely hard to notice those things. Uh, as a drive coach down in the field, right? We all see it up in the stands, and we see the Thunder Chickens fall. But to expect somebody to see that behind the glass is a much more difficult thing as well. Yeah, uh, just to pop in really quick, uh, Conal King 865, uh, I did correct me. I guess I must have saw it wrong, but um, I guess the foot was not touching on level one, and the bumpers uh, clearly were below HAB 3, um, but I thought the uh, foot was also touching. So my bad on that one. Yeah. It's, I also love that uh, Nick did not try to say 930's name once. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I went to after the remembrance and what uh, rem remedial. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> McQuanago Bears may have been beyond his, um, beyond his skills today. But no, I mean, um, it's all right. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's definitely interesting when the. Uh, the climbs are called differently because I remember seeing that. I, yeah, I, it's a hard one. Because I I believe the the call was correct in this. Yeah, match. I'm gonna have to I agree with you. I, I would agree that yeah, it was I think the this right call. this match was the one where it was called correctly, which was um what was it? It ended up being I think two level twos and a level two one. Level, so fifteen. Yep. Yeah, and then I think in the round robin it was called as a level three, a two, and a one. Yes, that's what it was. Yeah, and thirteen which, ten was awarded the level three, and then nine thirty was awarded the two, and then Celtex obviously the one. Yeah, and I don't think, and it's because people have tried to argue that like, oh, they're not supporting. Like nine thirty is up underneath thirteen ten, like they're supporting them. Does that? I mean, if like that's that's the definition of you know support. They're sitting on it. Yeah, and my heart breaks for you know <laughs> yeah. thirteen ten and nine thirty because. They were one point away from a world championship. And, you know, in the end, the match is the match, and the rules are the rules. And, you know, there's nothing that you can bend those. I mean, hats off to, uh, you know, 217, 3707, 4481, and uh, 1310. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think both alliances were super deserving of this championship, whether it was, you know, the the Celtex group or the, the Techno Dogs group. Um, I think that this is probably one of the easiestly most – uh, strategized matches that I have watched this year, um, even on both sides of the alliances. I, you know, I commend the the blue alliance for having the switching rockets, but I also commend the red alliance for focusing on the cargo points versus the hatch points. You know, I think that it was just a great match of full strategy, and it was truly um, a better finals to watch than what we had at Detroit last year. So, yeah, that's what somebody, mm -hmm. the ultra corgi who's from 9:30, just posted in chat. Is you know, 
He's he's glad it was a fair fight. Yeah. You know, unlike 217 last year with the yeah, we, two matches. we had some rough times, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, uh, it could be closer. You know, 2016 could be closer, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get much closer than that. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.